we were here as well to launch the very first offering of Alerto Ako. Alerto Ako was an exhibit which showed you and the viewers all that the uh, electronic scams that we get from ATM, phishing, skimming, uh, identity theft, all the scams, the Ponzi schemes, the Nigerian scams. We try to impart all of that knowledge. We try to show you what an illegal ATM machine looked like. We try to show you the mechanisms that they would use to try to copy your credit cards and your ATM cards. We had very good feedback then. And here we are again, only three weeks later, back here in Cebu, with the indulgence of our uh, of this Zoom, uh, with the, our colleagues here in the regional office, to mount yet another financial exhibit. But unlike Alerto Apo, which was three days, this will run for two weeks. So when we, when Ja talks about having reached out to 19,000 individuals in the in the Money Matters for Kids. That's 19,000 individuals who previous to that had no exposure to this type of activities or this type of knowledge. So the two, two questions that normally arise when we talk about this type of activities is, number one, why does the BSP bother to do it? And the second question is, do you really want to talk to children in grade school to talk about financial literacy when that topic is very difficult, even for the working profession. So let me answer the very first question. Why does the BSP bother? The simple answer is, we care. We care about today, the economy, Cebu as a region, as a province. We care about individuals, but more so we care about the Philippines as an economy and as a financial center in the years to come. This is not the type of information that you see on a billboard. You go home and tell your parents, now I know. I will never be scammed. I will learn to say, financial literacy is a process. It is not an event. And if there is anything that I would like you to remember, my dear kids, it's that point. You do not learn these activities by looking at the colors or the drawings or the plastic ATM cards or the ATM machines or the pieces of paper that we show you. We even show you here what a fake peso bill looks like, which we cannot announce to the public, but we will show it to you. So it's a great opportunity and it is that opportunity that I hope you use as a linchpin for your learning process. This is a lifelong skill. It is a lifelong learning process. The other question is, do we really want to talk to you when we can be talking to them? The left side and the right side. There is an interesting financial literacy survey conducted by Sun Life. They tested several thousands of Filipinos. 20% of Filipinos say they are financial experts. They know how to plan, budget, prepare for retirement undertake investments, make the distinction between a mutual fund and a UITF or a variable unit link or a structured product. These are all very advanced topics. So 20%. These same people were asked to take a test. After saying that they were experts, they were told to take a test. Do you know that nobody got a line of nine in the test? And do you know that 9 out of 10 individuals got a score lower than 80%? So if 20% of Filipinos say they're experts and our average score is something like 74, then I worry what somebody who says they're not an expert. Because that means their score is very low. So we, there are situations where we think we know them. But when we are subjected to the actual practice of financial education, we find that there is so much more to learn. So, given that particular survey result, we could have simply said, okay, why don't we do an education campaign for the working adults, for those who have ATM cards, for those who make investments, for those who are about to plan for retirement, so that when you hit 55 or 65 in the, governor, in the government sector, that you are already prepared 
for the life ahead when you're no longer earning. We could have done that. But the problem is, again, we go back to the fundamental tenet that financial education is a lifelong event. You do not teach somebody how to prepare for retirement when they are 54 years old. You do not intervene when they are 50 years old. Neither do you intervene when they are 40 years old because the vesting period is already too short. Just imagine, for the young kids, some of you will take economics, finance, business when you reach college. Remember this question. If you had 10,000 pesos and you will save it for 15 years at a deposit rate of 1%, 2%, how much do you think you will have when you retire? I always use my parents as an example. My father just died, or moved on a few months ago. When he, he was, he was one of those people who fought in the war, guerrilla, then went to the military, married my mom, went to the private sector, worked for the business sector, retired as a vice president of a big corporation. So you know how much his retirement money was? from uh, SSS. That's a lifelong of working. Yes, whoever gets uh, closest to my father's retirement, Libre and Jolly Mina Lunch. Yes, children, best guess, my father worked for 44 years. Any guess from the children? My father worked for 44 years. What do you think was his retirement uh, money from SSS? This. Yes. Oh. Top three guesses. The closest number gets promised Jalvi Hill. Yes. Come on. One million. Next guess. Hundred thousand. Next guess. There's one million, there's hundred thousand. How much do you think the private retirement fund would give my father every year? Yes. Five hundred thousand. So the answers that we have on the table, my dear friends, are one hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, and one million. The actual answer is two thousand two hundred eighty-three pesos a month. <laughs> 2,283 His first check, my father's first check, was 200, 2,228 was his first check. So he goes to SSS and shouts at everybody. My father is, just imagine, my father is 6'3", very big, ex-military, ex-basketball player, ex-athlete, really angry guy, you don't want to get, you don't want to be at the shouting end of the guy. He shouts at everybody in SSS, and I'm the poor guy behind him. And they said, I'm sorry sir, that na mali, mali ho yung check eh, palitan namin ho, hindi ho 228, 2,283. Na urong yung sting decimal point. My father uh, died after several years of being ill. He had Parkinson's, he had Alzheimer's. His monthly medicine was about 32,000. His medical expenses monthly was another 21,000. And he would be hospitalized once or twice a year for a quarter of a million each time. So how much do you think will 2,283 pesos pay? What's my point? The very point I made is the future that you create depends almost exclusively with how you prepare for it. For my friends and colleagues on the right side, my right side of the room, they're very aware that tomorrow will come. As young children, tomorrow seems like an eternity. 
can always play. Huwag na lang eh. Ang exam next week pa man, huwag na lang po mag-study. Then when tomorrow comes, huwag na lang po mag-study. Until Saturday comes, Sunday na lang po mag-study. You can always push back, push back, push back. But preparing for a financial tomorrow does not benefit from a do it tomorrow. You start today. We would like to hope that your journey for preparing yourself for a financial tomorrow starts today. I would like to hope that you will remember when you are in your 20s after college, 30s, when you start having a family, that you would remember this day, November 5, 2014, that you had spent time here in the BSP Regional Office to try to take a look at all of these exhibits. What exactly are you about to see? Not only are you going to see history of money, the coins from other countries and our coin, we will actually show you what a real peso looks like versus fake pesos that we've seen in the market. We will actually use an ultraviolet light. It's the lighting that is reduced by bankers to tell whether the money you have is fake or not. That's not an opportunity that we can give everybody. But we are more than perfectly happy to share that with you today. We will try to share with you the principles of budgeting, grocery. We will try to show you how an ATM machine looks like. We will try to show you what preparing for retirement looks like. All of that, not in a lecture, not in a, you have to memorize this because you have to have a test tomorrow. We will try to show that in pictures, in colors, in games, in pamphlets, in booklets, in color pads, in things that we understand from a day-to-day -day basis. I am also very happy that our colleagues uh, from the from Cebu are here, led no less by the governor himself. Uh, how else can you not say that this is an important event when the governor, or Governor Davide himself, makes time from his busy schedule to be with us and share a few moments. So, Governor, my, my personal thanks and with, the, uh, with our community, I would like to request for a round of applause for the governor. What then is our hope? Uh, if 50% of you kids will remember this day, this will be an extreme success. Why am I hoping for 50? Because I'm hoping that the 50% who don't remember will get married to the 50% who do. <laughs> and that's why you will have a family that understands all this. You may be young today. Sooner or later, you will grow up. Sooner or later, you will have the financial mandate to manage your own bahon, your own accounts. Sooner or later, you will be working. And sooner or later, you have your own families. That is the journey of the financial future. And I'm hoping that it starts today. Maybe, maybe the next governor of the Central Bank of the Philippines may come from the Beijing Center for the Arts, or City Central Elementary School, or from Chedling Learning Center, Maranatha Christian Academy, Small Wonders Acad Academic Center, One World Montessori. Maybe many of you will become presidents of commercial banks, rural banks, thrift banks. Maybe one of you will have the extreme privilege of becoming the governor of city. Maybe. But if all of these are maybes, we need to make sure that everyone is equipped with enough tools and understanding to prepare for a maybe. Because at the end of the day, we may not be the President of the Philippines, but you would be yourself. You would be an individual who will have to make your own financial decisions for yourself and your, for your family. And that's where the payoff. I'd like to also thank and acknowledge our, uh, the cooperation from the Department of Education. 
from the Cebu Bankers Club. Uh, thank you very much. You've, you've always uh, supported the activities of the BSP from the Cebu Federation of Rural Banks. Thank you, thank you so much. And as well as the Philippine Information Agency. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a fun two weeks. Let me not uh, spend a second longer. And I'd like to thank you very much for the time you've given us today. I know for the students that you were mandated to be here. I know that. But I hope that when you leave this place, you would want to come back over the next two weeks. You would want to bring your classmates along, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your neighbors. I would want to hope that I will see you again, not today, maybe tomorrow, maybe 10 years from now, you remind me that I was there on November 5, 2014. And for the person who guessed 100,000 retirement, you're the closest to my 2,200. <laughs> so I owe you lunch, Johnny, anytime, anywhere. Thank you very much.